everybody. Thanks for having me here this morning. Um, so yeah, we haven't had the sequencer very long or this data, so I just want to preface all that. Um, but I'm going to be talking about cancer sequencing in our platform. Just to introduce a bit about what we do at the Broad, um, we're a large-scale sequencing operation. A lot of the sequencing we do is for large population-scale studies like whole genome analysis. We have done about 500,000 whole genomes, part of AOU project and these other large-scale uh, data sets. We've also run um, 750,000 whole exomes. So the majority of the work we do is these large-scale, very standardized assays. But we also support a smaller lab, which um, supports a lot, all these cancer bespoke workflows um, that have their own unique challenges. So uh, we often have small uh, numbers of samples or their FFPE samples or cell-free DNA samples. We have to customize the content, often because we're doing very deep sequencing for UMI error correction platforms. Um, we, we operate both a clinical lab and a research lab. So we have to meet fast turnaround times um, to support some of the clinical research applications that run through our lab. So in this cancer world, because we have to do all this customization and smaller scale sequencing, we often have to consider what is the target we're sequencing um, and, and all these multi-dimensions of the project. So how many samples do we have? What's the depth of coverage that that particular application needs? And time and batching is also a factor. So as our, when I talk to different groups who want to do sequencing with us, I often feel like I have to play Tetris with these sequencing technologies of what's the most cost-effective way to generate the data that they need for their particular project, which isn't always straightforward. And as the sequencers have gotten larger, larger yield output, we often end up, they end up costing more when we have smaller numbers of samples, even though the sequencing itself is cheaper. So for this reason, we wanted to evaluate the element of ED sequencer because we think it is a good combination of the high quality of data as well as the throughput of each individual flow cell. So the uh, applications that we tested in this platform uh, were two very commonly applied cancer assays in our lab, which is the first one, the ultra low pass coverage whole genome sequencing, which we generate 0.1x coverage of whole genome for copy number analysis and also uh, panel-based mutation indel detection. And the, the application space that we're supporting are Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. We also work with Count Me In to do return of results um, as part of um, these direct-to-patient projects and large collaborative efforts like Children's Ecology Group. So the first assay we evaluated is this shallow depth whole genome sequencing. Uh, in, in our lab, we've run about 15,000 of these over the past several years across lots of different tumor types. Uh, and this is a really low cost assay. It costs less than $100 for us to deliver these results in our lab. And so we can use this as a screening application for cell-free DNA samples. Um, we use an analysis with copy number data that characterizes the tumor fraction. So we can actually deliver this in our clinical lab as a tumor fraction estimate for a patient's uh, blood draws over time. So often we're using this in these clinical trial applications. We also run this assay for tissue so that we can sometimes sort of QC a, a sample to make sure it has enough tumor to either do a whole exome analysis or whole genome sequencing if that's, if that's what the downstream intended use case is. Um, in this assay, it's also been shown to be prognostic in breast cancer. A couple years ago, uh, you know, it was published that if, if patients have more than 10% tumor when they're measured with this low uh, pass sequencing assay, um, they are, you know, have lower median survival. So we wanted to know with the element sequencer, can we achieve comparable performance to our current clinical assay using this sequencer? So um, in this, uh, we evaluated two cohorts of samples. Um, the first cohort is a dilution series of high tumor fraction cell-free DNA samples that we diluted with a healthy donor cell-free DNA with no evidence of tumor. Um, and we are comparing that to our prior Illumina clinical validation results, as well as expected dilution tumor fraction from the whole exomes that we sequenced um, for an entirely orthog orthogonal comparison. And in this assay, we, the or ex whole exome sequencing, we use a much more granular allele-specific purity employee estimate. 
Uh, and our, we also, because we wanted to see how the element sequencer performs on a larger set of samples, actual real patient samples, we sequenced 30 breast cancer cell-free DNAs um, in triplicate. And all the sequencing was done by Sophie, who's sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, uh, also th that was done in our lab. This isn't like we sent samples to Element to be sequenced. Like we actually operated the sequencer and actually heard great reviews about how easy it was to run. Um, so just to talk a little bit about the sequencing quality that we saw when we ran. I'm talking first about all these lines here from the ultra low pass whole genome. Um, all of the sequencing lanes were greater than 95% Q30 bases, which fabulous quality results, and the yield ranged from about 262 to 315 gigabases. Um, so the results of our sensitivity and limit of detection comparison were really comparable to what we saw previously with Illumina. I think this is really encouraging data. Um, our, um, I didn't expect it to look so good on the first try, to be honest. <laughs> Um, we used very standard pipelines to align the data, and that we ran the same copy number analysis that we do with Illumina. We did generate for this data set a element-specific panel of normals as the noise control for our copy number analysis, but in general, we were really encouraged by this data. This sample on the left actually has a, is a known limitation in our assay, which has particular copy number events that when we estimate it with this low pass coverage, actually end up underestimating the tumor. So this is not due to any element specific differences. And you can see Illumina and Element have similar tumor fraction estimates for that sample. So on the 30 breast cancer blood draws, um, also see really comparable results to our prior clinical data. Um, high, all, of this, all of the samples um, that we expect that to be within the range of the limit of detection for the assay, which for, is about 3%. We have very um, low CV, um, so very consistent data across all of the replicate sets that we sequenced. And um, as, you, as you approach the limit of detection, you see the CV goes up. This is you know, what we expected from this data. A few of the quality metrics that we analyze as part of this clinical assay are the mean depth of coverage across the genome. Um, all of the, the vast majority of samples met the minimum 0.1x coverage for this, um, which means you know, we can run a lot of samples at a time. We can operate this in the standard way that we do on the element to how we do it on the Illumina sequencer. And another uh, measure that we investigate is median absolute de deviation, which is a measure of scatter in the copy number analysis. Um, and we want all the samples to be under 0.15 in this measure, and all of the samples met that. And just to show you a bit like what an actual sample looks like, this is the output of the assay. We deliver a copy number profile, a tumor fraction estimate, a ploidy estimate. And again, we're really encouraged by the results we see here. That in this case, the element sample had higher coverage. Um, and uh, we have really very similar tumor fraction estimates. Are there any questions about low pass sequencing? I'm going to switch to the targeted panels. Um, so I also want to mention I'm going to go through this targeted panel part really quickly. Um, but Sophie has a poster later that has a lot more information on our targeted panel analysis. But the other um, assay we tested in this platform was um, gene panel sequencing, of which we have a lot of applications, you know, mostly cancer, but not all cancer applications run through this platform. Um, and also, we sort of bucket in our express whole exome sequencing into this category, because even though it's not a customized target design, we often have to deliver it really quickly and ha often have to run just a few samples at a time, because we do run these neoantigen prediction pipelines that we do use to in clinical trials to develop cancer vaccines. So we have to deliver the data within 21 days. So the sensitivity performance in, our, in the targeted panel comparison was also really comparable between our prior benchmarking exercises with Illumina. Um, we use a hat map pooling strategy, and this is all explained in Sophie's poster. <laughs> Um, to measure, um, to simulate the presence of somatic variants, and we want a lot of them to call, so we pool together 
groups of hot map samples so that we can really assay a, um, the, the variation uh, at a range of both target depth and allele fraction, because in cancer we're looking for you know, the, the heterogeneity in the tumor. And we really do want to see variants at the 5% VAF and 10% VAF range in these targeted panels. Um, and so again, we have very similar sensitivity between um, Illumina and Element here. And the panel we tested was a 396 gene pan cancer panel, has one megabase coding territory, um, two megabases overall territory. We have a bunch of other content that's much more experimental for MSI, copy number, um, structural variant analysis. Specificity we measure um, by sequencing replicates of the control sample NA12878, and we call variants um, between the two samples, and any variant that we call in the somatic pipeline is considered a false positive, and we see very comparable false positive rates. I mean, a slightly lower false positive on the element, actually, probably because of the higher Q30 bases. Overall performance, just to give you one number <laughs> in terms of our comparison between the two data technologies we tested here, Illumina, slightly higher sensitivity, slightly higher, slightly lower specificity. Um, Element, you know, th these numbers, I don't think the difference between them is very meaningful because I think this is just one test. Um, but, you know, we were really encouraged by this result. I also want to mention that the mutation calling pipeline we run here is Mut Mutec2, which was developed during the days of Illumina sequencing and has not at all been optimized or, you know, we haven't looked into this data much for, you know, wh what do we see and what variants we're missing in either case or what are the additional variants being called, so. This is, I think, on the first pass without any optimization for element data, which we know we should do, um, we have really comparable results. So in conclusion, I think this was a really encouraging benchmarking exercise in our lab and actually much easier to do than other <laughs> benchmarking sort of comparisons we've done. Um, the sequencer performed well. We had expected yields and data quality. The shallow depth whole de genome tumor fraction estimates were really similar to what we'd seen before and high quality. Um, in, the, in the targeted panel, we had you know, comparable sensitivity, slightly lower false positive. I think we have more work to do in the mutation calling um, if we are going to adopt an element as an offering in our lab. And I think the other, we, we definitely would need to develop a panel of panel specific, uh, element specific panel of normals for a noise control. And I think we could even improve the false positive rate more um, using that. Um, and I think you know, the one thing we didn't do in this evaluation, just because this is the first time we've run any cancer applications on the sequencer, is we didn't run any FFPE samples. So that would be sort of the next thing to look into, because the vast majority of this panel sequencing is either FFPE or cell free DNA. So happy, want to thank everybody who was involved with uh, generating this data and helping us analyze it. Um, and it's been great working with Element. So take any questions. Do you use a UMI for the panel? For this, no, because we didn't. First, we just wanted to evaluate the standard MUTEC 2 variant detection without UMI. We didn't sequence these to you know, 25,000 X depth on the first go. But I think we would test that as part of it. And uh, duplicate phase? So yeah, I, they did mention that we didn't do, um, I, I didn't have this, in, but I know that there is lower duplication with element. And so the comparison is a little bit unfair, I would say here, for like biasing against uh, element, because in order to do all these comparisons and, and do apples to apples comparisons, we had to sample, downsample the data to equivalent coverages between Illumina and element. And we did that after duplication removal. So <laughs> due to that, element will probably perform better if we, if we, you know, basically we had to generate less data on element than Illumina to get the same results. <laughs>